Welcome back to my channel and today's video is all about your week number three activity pertaining to transaction analysis and determination of unknown accounting values. This is the problem. But before I'm going to present to you its answer, let us have first a very brief discussion on what transaction analysis is all about. It pertains to the process of analyzing a business event or transactions wherein we are going to determine its effect to the accounting elements as well as to our accounting equation and also the choice of the appropriate account title to be used, whether what should be debited or credited, and the correct amount to be posted or recorded in our books of accounts. Okay? This will lead to the accountants mentally answering the following questions. First, what is the value received? Because this would be our debit. Next is what is the value parted with? This will correspond to our credit. And third, what accounting elements are affected? Let us have a review. What are those accounting elements? We have the assets liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. Next, what is its effect to the affected accounting elements? Is it increase in assets, increase in liabilities, increase in owner's equity, or the reverse? So that is the question number four. And for question number five, what should be the appropriate account title to be used? in recording such business events or transactions and finally what is the amount to be recorded in our books of accounts okay so to further explain this one let us discuss the rules of debits and credits we have here the type of financial statements the balance sheet and income statement with their corresponding accounting elements i mentioned a while ago this slide shows the effect of a transaction when an accounting element is debited or credited. For example, the asset. To debit, we have to increase the amount of the asset. And credit means to decrease its amount. How about the liability? What is the effect if we debit a liability account the answer is that it decreases the liability account since the effect is decreased if we debit the liability account therefore to increase it means we have to credit the liability account okay Can you tell me the rule of debit and credit for the remaining three accounting elements? I am confident that using this guide, you can do it by yourself. Okay? In addition, let me have this additional slide showing the accounting equation as you can see in this slide it is divided into two sides the left side and the right side okay here is our accounting equation please remember that the accounting equation always maintain a balanced figure or amount so therefore the total of this assets plus drawing plus expenses must be always equal to the total of liabilities, other equity, and revenue. Again, these are our accounting elements shown in our expanded accounting equation. Okay, let us have an acronym, ADELER. Again, Adler. Okay. The rules of debit and credit are based on its normal balances 
of an accounting element or account. The term normal balance of an account pertains to the usual position of an account in the T account. Okay? For a day, assets, drawing, and expenses, the normal balances are debit. That is why it is written in the left side or in our debit side. While the L, O, E, and R, the normal balances of these accounting elements are credit. That's why it's written in the right side. Okay? To increase the AD, to increase the AD, we have to debit it. And in contrast, to decrease it, we have to credit the AD. And for the LER, since the normal balance is credit, so to increase it, we have to credit it. And to decrease means to debit the LER. I just do hope that these two images here can help you understand the rules of debits and credits. Now let's continue by answering now our problem. Transaction number one is given for you. Okay? For this problem, we're going to read number one. Miss Virginia invests cash in the business where she opened an account with Bank of the Philippines Islands. The amount is 250000 To analyze this one, we have to ask ourselves, what is the value received? What is the value received? The value received is the cash. What is the accounting element affected? Again, what are our accounting elements? We have the assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. So what is the accounting element that is being affected in our transaction number one? Yes, it's the asset. What account to be debited here? Or what account title? should be used in this transaction. For this entire problem, we're going to use cash if it pertains to a cash transaction. So the value received therefore using the appropriate account title is the cash with the accurate amount 250,000. So we're done analyzing the debit side. Now let's proceed to the credit side or the value part as with. In exchange for this cash that we receive, okay, the value parted with is the claim of the owner to the business and the appropriate account title to be used is Virginia Ruben Capital with same amount 250000 The accounting element affected here is the owner's equity. What can you observe if we're going to go back in our previous slide? So, in our problem, the value received is cash, so we debit it, and the value parted with is capital. Let's go back to our previous slide. Cash is an asset account. Since we debit it, therefore, we increase the asset account. While the owner's equity... Well, the owner's equity in our problem or transaction number one, we credit it because it connotes increase in our, in our owner's equity account. Now, let's continue with transaction number two. Withdrew cash from the bank to pay for the business permits to the city government with the amount of 5,000 pesos. Now, let, let us try to analyze the transaction. In this, let us ask ourselves, what is the value received? The value received is the business permits. What is the accounting element affected? Is it A, 
L O E revenue or expenses the answer is expenses now what is the appropriate account title to be used it's the taxes and licenses okay and of course the amount is 5000 pesos now let's go to the credit side what is the value parted with it is evident since we paid therefore the value parted with is the cash with same amount 5000 or should i say in analyzing the transaction if there is a cash involved just ask yourself what is more clear to you what is more prevalent to you is the value received is the cash if the answer is yes you have to debit cash with the amount that you receive then ask yourself why did you receive a cash why let's go back to transaction number one you receive cash because the owner invested in the business so that would be your credit the answer why you receive a cash go back to transaction number two in this way of analysis what is more clear to you is it the value received or the value parted with if we're going to think about the cash transaction maybe you will agree with me that the value parted with is more clearer in this transaction number two therefore you can have first a credit of cash because that because that is more clear to you then ask yourself why did i parted with a cash why there is a cash outflow of five thousand why because you pay business permits the answer of your question why you parted with a cash or why you pay something because you paid taxes and licenses okay let us continue to problem number three by using the recent analysis that i presented to you transaction number three states that you receive cash okay again you receive cash so therefore upon reading the problem put yourself in the problem you receive cash so automatic that the value received is the cash by how much it stayed here four thousand why did you receive a cash because in exchange of the cash you rendered services and the appropriate account title to be used is service fee with the same amount of four thousand others might have an answer of service income that's still correct okay so just to recap transaction number three cash is under the accounting element of asset and service fee is under the accounting elements of the revenue or income now let's proceed to number four both office supplies so you bought something did you pay it through cash or on account so it stayed here on account therefore ask again yourself when you bought office supplies on account what is your value received of course you will say miss divine the value that i receive is the office supplies therefore you have to write this account title unused office supplies the amount is 2000 but since it is on account therefore the exchange of this or the value parted with which should be our credit would be our liability to swazo company our supplier so our credit should be accounts payable the appropriate account title with the same amount 2000 so a news office applies 
is an account under the asset accounting element and accounts payable is under liability so you can relate this one again in our previous slide in the rules of debit and credit maybe some of you in transaction number four have different answer maybe you answered use of supplies or maybe some of you answered office supplies expense your answer is still correct why because transaction number four can be recorded either using asset method like this one or it may be initially recorded using the expense method the two methods i mentioned a while ago the asset method and the expense method should be used alternatively but if you decided to use asset method therefore you will use that during the entire recording for the purpose of consistency this can be explained further in the next next coming videos when we are going to discuss or tackle the adjusting entries now let's proceed to transaction number five withdraw cash withdraw cash from the bank for her personal use let's go back to the previous problem that i posted in my video pertaining to the uh business entity concept wherein the business is separate is is considered as separate and distinct from its owner or owners therefore this transaction number five in the perception of the business is that the business has the cash as the value parted with and the reason of that because we have drawings of the owner therefore the appropriate account title is virginia drawing or virginia ruben drawing the amount is ten thousand and we credit cash ten thousand now let's proceed to transaction number six withdraw cash from the bank what's the purpose to pay our obligation from or with Swaso company here is our transaction from number four so ask yourself again what is more clear to you did you receive cash or did you have a value parted of cash the answer here is that the more clear here is we we have a value parted with of cash amounting to one thousand to pay off our accounts payable and for transaction number seven we rendered services in account for various clients three thousand five hundred so the value parted with and the value received here is that the value received here is your collectible from your clients so the appropriate account title is the accounts receivable with the amount of 3500 and the value parted with is that we services rendered to our clients and the appropriate account title is service fee or service income will do so still the amount is 3500 so what you can observe in every transaction the total of our debit is always equal to the total of our credit okay now let's continue to transaction number eight we drew cash from the bank for payment of salaries to her employees so the value received here is the employees services to the company and the appropriate account title is what salaries expenses this is under the accounting element of expenses the amount is ten thousand and the value parted with is the cash ten thousand and finally 
Transaction number 9, we collected 2,000 from clients. Okay, so our value received is the cash, 2,000, and the value parted with is the accounts receivable or 2,000. Or you simply ask yourself, what is your value received? Yes, ma'am, we have cash, 2,000. Why did you receive cash of 2,000? Because we collected from our clients. So your answer would be your credit. And the appropriate account title is accounts receivable. Okay, hope you learned somehow with what transaction analysis is all about by having these answers. Now let's continue to the next problem, the determination of the accounting values. Here we have three assets, liabilities, and owner security. Again, always take note that in our basic accounting equation, A is always equal to L plus owner's equity. So for case number one, we have assets, 60,000, liabilities of 40,000, therefore, how much would be our owner's equity? The answer is 20,000 pesos. How you get that one? That is 60 minus 40 equals 20. By substituting here in our equation, 60 equals 40 plus 20. So the equation is balanced, 60 equals 60. Okay? Now let's move on to case number two. We have here the assets 50,000, liabilities is missing. We have to determine the missing accounting values and our clue here is the owner's equity 30%. Since this is our case, therefore our 50,000 represents our 100%. So to get the liabilities, so 100% less 30%, Therefore, our li liabilities rather represent 70%. So the answer would be 50,000 times 70%, we get 35,000. Okay? Now let's move on to case number three. Assets is a known. Liabilities is 40%. Owner's equity is 45,000. How much would be our assets? Assets again is our 100%. How to get the 100%? So since liabilities is 40%, therefore owner's equity represents 60% to get the 100%. That is 45,000 divided by 60%, we can get 75,000. Finally, case number four, very simple one. So to get the liabilities again, 85,000 less 63,750, the answer is 21,250. Hope that you learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in my next video.